how to knit the bubble stitch. Hi, my name is Norman. I run the blog NimbleNeedles.com and today I want to show you everything you need to know about the bubble stitch knitting pattern. It's a lovely technique to add structure and a kind of three-dimensionality to your knitting. In this video I'll not only show you how to knit the standard technique but also a total of five different alternative ways to knit a bubble stitch and how to knit bigger and smaller versions. So let's dive right into it. In front of me is a swatch with a lot of bubbles. Before I show you the technique, I just quickly wanted to mention that there is not the bubble stitch and the one method to knit it. Rather, it's just a more general classification for all kind of knitting techniques that end up looking like bubbles. And likewise, this pattern here is not the only way to add them to a project. You don't have to space them out with five stitches and four rows in between each bubble. You can mix it up any way you like. Either way, let's knit a couple of stitches together. You start by knitting up to the position where you want to place the bobble. And then you knit a KFBF, knit front, back, front into that stitch. This will increase your stitch count by two and you end up with three stitches on your right needle. I'll link you my full tutorial on how to knit the KFB up in here and in the description below. So you knit front, then you knit into the back, and then you knit one more time into the front and you have three stitches on your right needle. And from here things are pretty straightforward. You turn your project around and then you purl across these three stitches. Make sure you don't accidentally uh, purl four or so, just those three stitches. And then you turn your project around and you knit across, knit across those three stitches. And now you might already know what's happening next. You turn around again and you purl across one more time. So purl across. And then you turn around one last time. And now you need to decrease these three stitches into one. And we are doing it with a centered double decrease or knit three together centered. I'll link you my full tutorial up in here and in the description below. So slip two stitches knit wise, knit one, and then pass those two uh, slipped stitches over the one you just knit. And there is your finished bubble. Let's do it one more time. So knit up to the position where you want to place the bubble. So here. And then knit front. Knit into the back. And knit into the front of that one stitch one more time. And three stitches. Then turn around. Purl across. So purl those three stitches. Turn around. And knit across. Turn around one more time. Purl across. Oops. And turn around one last time and knit three together centered. So slip two knit wise, knit one and pass over. Easy, isn't it? So comment if you think this is much easier than you thought. It's just, you know, turning around a couple of times. <laughs> 
Now I promised you some tips and tricks and here they are. So instead of increasing with a KFBF, which can be a bit harder to knit at times, you can also increase by uh, knit yarn over and knit into the same stitch again. So knit, yarn over and knit three stitches and then you continue turning um, the work around and purling. Um, this version is a tiny bit easier to knit, um, but I feel the KFB version is a bit better. So this bobble here was knit with KFB and this one was uh, knit with the yarn over alternative. And I mean the difference is not great, but um, I feel here the transition is much smoother than here and that's why I recommend KFB. And likewise some old books will show you uh, the final decrease as a standard knit three together. So you go into three stitches at the same time and then you knit them uh, together like this. So like this. Personally, I don't um, uh, see why this makes a lot of sense. First of all, it's a bit more difficult to knit, but it's also a slanted decrease. Um, let's take a look at our little swatch here again. So here I decrease the bobble width and knit three together and you can clearly see the right slant of the decrease. And this is the centered version with a continuous line of uh, knit stitches. And again, the difference is certainly not big and it's not going to bring peace to the world or cure cancer, but it's noticeable. And as neither version is tremendously more difficult to knit, I feel it is important to show you the best way to knit the bubbles. Please comment or give me a thumbs up if you like this approach. So I promised you different ways to knit the bubble stitch and you probably already saw the different sized uh, bubbles on this swatch I just showed you. And indeed you can easily change the size of the bubbles. You see the bubble stitch, let me zoom in, you see the bubble stitch is basically nothing else but knitting a bit of extra fabric and reattaching it one row above. And because even such a tiny um, little piece of stockinet stitch curls in on the edges, the final result will look pretty round. And following this principle, you can also knit four stitch bubbles or five stitch bubbles and really get creative. So let me show you. For a four stitch bubble, you start by knitting front, back, front, sorry, front, and then you go into the back one more time and thereby you add four stitches. And from here uh, you just purl across just the way you did before. So it's just increasing to one more stitch. So four, purl across, then you knit across four stitches. Then um, of course you Curl across one more time. So the difference is really just um, the increase, the initial increase. And, and then you need to decrease those last four stitches. So again, you slip two stitches knit wise, knit one, then pass those two stitches over the one you just knit. And here's one last stitch you need to decrease. So slip this stitch back to the left needle and pass that final stitch over as well. And there is your four stitch bubble. And of course you can also knit uh, a five stitch bubble. Um, so you start by increasing to five stitches. Let's do the yarn over version here. So knit, yarn over, knit, yarn over, knit. Uh, of course, you also can do knit front, back front, back front. And then you uh, purl across again. 
knit across and purl one more time. I'm going to uh, fast forward here. So again, I purled one round, knit one round and purled one round. And now you need to decrease those five stitches. And again, slip two stitches knit wise, knit one, pass two stitches over, slip to the left needle and then pass these two stitches over as well. And here is your five stitch bobble. But, <clears throat> but there's more. You can also change the general appearance of the bobbles as well. For example, you can also knit garter stitch bobbles. Since garter stitch behaves a bit differently, I suggest you knit them like this. So again, knit up to the position where you want to place the bobble and then increase to five stitches. Knit, yarn over, knit, yarn over, knit. And then turn the project around and knit across. Remember before we purled across, but now you want garter stitch. So this means knit across, knit across, and then turn around again. And we are going to decrease straight away. So we are going to uh, knit these two stitches together knit them together and then slip the remaining stitch back to the left needle and then pass these last three stitches over one at a time. And there's your first garter stitch bubble. Let's do it one more time. So knit yarn over, knit yarn over, knit five stitches, turn around, bring the yarn to the back and knit across, knit across, and then turn to the right side again, and then um, knit those first two stitches together, knit together, slip to the left needle and pass over the remaining three stitches and you finished your garter stitch bubble. Of course, if you want bigger bubbles, you can also add two more rows in garter stitch before you decrease. You can also replace bobbles with Estonian noob stitches. These buttons, um, they consist of loops of yarns and they are not as solid. Uh, this can look really, really lovely with lacier patterns, patterns and more fragile yarns. There are three or four different ways um, to knit the noob stitch, but I'll quickly show you one. Now, I want to be honest, I'm not the biggest expert on Estonian lace. So if this technique is something that interests you, I can highly recommend um, this book, Knitted Lace of Estonia by um, Nancy Bush and it's filled with tons of amazing patterns and local knitting techniques, even a bit of local history. So I'll put a link in the description below. You start by increasing one stitch into seven. So knit one stitch, add a yarn over, knit one more stitch, add a yarn over, and as you can see, you need to knit as loosely as possible. Stretch out those stitches really far and increase by seven. So seven stitches and then you can drop that stitch. And now you need to insert your left needle into those seven stitches again and knit them together. If you knit too tightly, this is going to be impossible. And then you need to knit that stitch one more time, add one more knit stitch, and then you can drop it. And there is your noob. Of course, uh, the neater 
you knit and the neither you place the loops on your left needle the neither the loop will look so this will require a bit of practice and also um, picking a lacier la yarn helps tremendously uh, this sturdy cotton yarn i'm using to show you is probably not the best idea for uh, lace um lace stitches and then you can also add bobbles with a crochet hook. I really like this version because it does not require you to turn the work around a couple of times. If you are knitting a big lace shawl or I don't know a blanket you will notice that the turning gets a bit awkward. So to add a crochet bubble to your knitting start by transferring the stitch you want to place the bubble to your crochet hook and then add three simple chain stitches one two three and then add um, a triple crochet into that same stitch oops the needles are getting in the way so add a triple crochet into that uh, same stitch but here's the important part you need to keep the loop on the hook and not uh, close it with this one and then add three more uh, triple crochets and once you've got those four triple crochets on your hook together with the initial chain stitch you simply crochet these four stitches together and then you can uh, place uh, the bubble on the finished bubble on your knitting needle and either knit across one more time or just transfer it to your uh, right needle and then continue knitting and there is your finished crochet bubble and as you can see I mean we uh, did this with, with crochet but uh, the difference uh, compared to the knitting is not that noticeable so I feel it is really a viable alternative and last but certainly not least you can also knit the bubble stitch in two colors or multiple colors. I think this is a really fantastic idea, but because it's a bit more complicated, well, not complicated to knit, let's say different, and there are some tricks you need to employ, I'll talk about it in my next video. So definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. Anyway, that's how to do the bubble stitch. I really, really hope I was able to show you this lovely, lovely knitting stitch pattern and all the different ways to knit it. Please give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And of course, feel free to comment with your questions or your feedback. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.